Hey, what's up everyone? This is Soju Talk, your weekly shot at K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 165, and we're recording on Sunday, November 14th, 2021. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Warren. Hey, what's up everybody? And Anita. Hello. And as a quick reminder, check out Soju Talk on your favorite podcast platform, sub to us on YouTube, and join the Soju Talk Discord, and be a part of the nation. Alright, um, first thing... It's a Sunday. We're not recording on Monday. Um, what happened? Long story short, I'm going on a trip tomorrow until Wednesday. So mm. it messed up our whole recording schedule. So we're recording this on Sunday at 9 p.m. It's like past <laughs> my bedtime. I'm an old man. We're going we're gonna to try to do it, though. We're going to try to do it. Um, Pull an all-nighter. Power through. Uh, secondly, uh, let's make a correction from last week. So Zandi reached out to us. He is, in fact, an Indonesian in England. Uh, so he is not English, he is Indonesian. So we finally figured that out. So shout out to Zandi. Shout out to right. Zandi. And uh, so now we're at part one. So you talk episode 165. We're going to talk about big new releases, choose a spicy song king, and hit you with the music show winners. Let's get it. All right. Three releases. They're all kind of interesting this week. Um, the first one mm-hmm. is Tuesday, November 9th. It is One Us is Luna. So they are from RBW, debut 2014. Uh, last three songs were Life is Beautiful, Shut Up, Bako, Crazy Hot, and uh, Black Mirror. So those are three song names, but there's a lot of words in the second one. Mm. Zero music show wins so far. And I say I'm going to go last. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I oh. think he's saying that because One Us has a song called There's Lit, history there. There's history. Which was also very traditionally themed. Right, mm-hmm. and that is one of the biggest, most controversial episodes slash takes that we've had on our show when Warren essentially dumpstered lit for like twenty minutes. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> if you want a bit of context, go check out the episode. Um, but I'll briefly mention it again when we need to. How do you guys feel about <laughs> Luna you know, by One Us? I kind of like this song. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's a good mm-hmm. song. Okay. I don't think it's... My favorite One Us song is Valkyrie from back in the day. Oh, yeah, right. way wow. back. Oh, wait. One Us did not debut 2014. I messed that up right there. I yeah, think I was about to say. <laughs> I think it's 20... 17? 18? 17? 2019. 2019. All right, so I messed that up. That's on me. We're off to a bad start. Um, I must have forgot to replace that one. But 2018 is from them. Um, you know this song? I thought that it was graceful. I liked what they did mm. with it. I think that last time with Lit, they kind of like dipped way too deep into the, into the traditional barrel where mm-hmm. it was like too much, gratuitous, if you might Overpowering say. Overpowering a little. Mm-hmm. This time, though, I thought it was subtle. It had the nice Asian motifs in it. I thought that they did well. It had good dance sequences. Overall, I like this package. I think this is an above average one-on song. Oh. Wow. Nice. Interesting. Anita, what about you? I really much agree with this. I think... The what I found surprising about the song was that I was a little bit apprehensive in the beginning because I thought, oh, this is a little bit going back to what they did with Lit. Uh, so it's not something new, something different. And I was like, OK, I guess this is this is something they're going to double down on, you know, this theme. But then the chorus hit and I was a little like, oh, OK, a little bit of a switch up in the beat. Um, it had more of a retro 80s pop vibe for me. And I don't know, I thought that was that was really nice. I thought like, oh, okay, I like this interaction where we're mixing the sound and still using the more traditional motifs, instrumentals here and there. Um, and it didn't feel overpowering. I feel like with Lit, it felt very much like it was very obvious where this was going, concept, theme, everything. And I felt like with this, it was a little bit more nuanced, I guess. Like it wasn't overpowering visually or musically, I think. And I think that was nice. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Interesting takes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Here's how I feel. All right, let's, let's begin with Lit. And I bring Lit up because... Mm-hmm. I bring lit up. That sounds like a fun sentence to say. Um, I bring lit up because this track feels like a unofficial sequel to that. They've done other stuff a in between. Bit. They have, yeah. right? But this clearly has that oriental Asian-ness to it in the arrangement, in the concepting, and what they're wearing, yeah. set design, all of that stuff. Even in the, the the cover art design, there's like it's very clear. It's like you know brushstroke, all that kind of cool stuff. Um, 
So I end up, I have to end up comparing it to Lit, which I gave it a very harsh critical review saying it was vague, it's not specific enough, it's almost to the point where it's just hogging on to Orientalism without any other substance and it's kind of over the top cringy. Um, Feel free to disagree with me, I know plenty of people liked Lit, Um, Mm. but um, a lot of what I said in that discussion that day over a year ago at this point um seems to have been fixed oh, no right okay. no i agree <laughs> yeah <laughs> no for sure i agree with you i uh, frankly i agree with what you guys said earlier you know like okay i was worried there <laughs> a, no a lot of the things feel a lot more tastefully done like i've mm, noticed yeah. lyrical references to like tracks like arirang which is like a Korean folk mm. song, like Ari Ari Dang Sari Sari. And like, it, it was done to like a degree where like it wasn't over the top, it was like a slight reference to it, you know? Like, mm-hmm. and and that is kind of nice. It's not like in your face, I we are Korean. It's more like, oh yeah, you know, we got that in here too. And that was nice. That was nice. I still feel like the arrangement and the sound itself is a little too vaguely Asian to the point where it feels like we're leaning into Orientalism rather than mm. Korean music. Specifically um, Korean. Mm. Right, right. Um, and even in their marketing material, they were like, oh, we're using Oriental instruments with a Orientality. And I was like, "That's." I'm not sure if that's something we should be really excited about given... You know, Korean music tends to have very strong differences between Chinese and Japanese and Taiwanese or, you know, Indonesian or Malaysian music. You know, you know what I mean? Like Asian has like Mm. very different things. Um, So with the sound, I don't I still don't think it's perfect. But at the same time, I feel a strong amount of improvement, especially with what you mentioned, Anita, because there was Mm. like the synthwave chorus. The chorus. Yeah. Right. And it flowed in so well. That part. I really like that part. Yeah. Same. Like that was that was that was lit. (laughs) <laughs> that part was lit. Not, lit wasn't lit. This this was it. Um, I, I still will admit, like, the lyrics don't make a lot of sense. Because, like, at certain points, most of the track is like, oh, like, this girl's very pretty. This girl's very pretty. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the Korean title of this track is Walha Bian, which directly translates to uh, Beautiful Lady Under the Moonlight. Ooh, um, yeah. Therefore, oh, Luna. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which is cool. Which is cool. And the whole track is like... You know, expressing that in several different ways, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, in, in a couple lines, they'll be like, "Well, I hope you break your feet following stars." I'm like, <laughs> "Is that what you want to tell a girl you're like flirting with? Like, I hope you break your feet." Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> and and so that was a little confusing to me in in the in the lyric side, which I I know isn't something everyone pays attention to, but still, like that kind of like um, layer was kind of. A little shallow, I would have to admit. But still, I think overall, like, the sound is a lot deeper and a lot, like, dynamic to the point where I'm like, okay, like, this is actually kind of enjoyable. I'm actually having a like, fun time. I don't think they listen to our podcasts, but, like, <laughs> maybe there was enough people who said the same things I did to the point where they were like, maybe we should fix a couple things, you know, like... Improvement. They, they yeah. scaled it back in a good way. You know what yeah. I mean? Yes, yeah. they, peacefully. Mm. And they right. just doubled down. They didn't quadruple down on it. You know, right? Like, right. which is which? Like, I get that you going hard for the concept, but I agree. I do like One Us is lit now more than I did in the past. But I will say that it was a little bit heavy handed, right? Mm. Maybe a little mm. bit is even a light way to put it. Um, this one though scaled it back. Nice motifs. It was definitely an improvement, and I do like this song. Um, I think that One Us sometimes gets lost in the mid tier like mer- like i don't know how to put it quagmire of things in the male <laughs> k-pop world mm. um that being said i think this is a step in the correct direction if they want to be the traditional dudes sure i think this is the correct way to go about it they could you do know? it mm. if that if that wants to be their thing um, honestly i it was like a situation for me where i felt like all hope was lost and they should go a different route mm-hmm. um i take that back i take that back do more of this. Tell me where you can go. And I'm excited. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's move to the second track. Wednesday, November 10th. We had the debut of Billy. So they are from... Uh, <laughs> well, they released Ring Ring. They are from Mystic Story. Debuted now. No last songs. No music show wins. Real quick. Is it Ring Ring and not Ring X Ring? I don't know. It might be Ring X Ring. Ring times Ring. Mm. Um, all right. Let, let's talk about this song. 
regardless of how I feel about the quality of the song, what a strong impression does the oh, song yeah. hit you with? Very interesting. Oh. <laughs> they're like risking it all on this one, you know? <laughs> like, there was a <laughs> clear commitment to what they were trying to do here. I think it works in certain aspects, but then there's other aspects which I think kind of like fell short a little. But at the end of the day, they have completely grabbed my attention. So they are doing something right in that regard. Um, mm. To elaborate, I think. I think the part that I can't overlook is like some of the that some of these sound effects are so loud and they're <laughs> like I get that they're catchy but like there's these siren things going off you know the yeah. entire time there's like these horror sounding thing aspects a lot of the time um I feel like at certain parts the vocals get drowned out by the background music Mm. Mm. Especially in the verses at times. Um, essentially, you're MG. saying the mix is bad. That's yeah, essentially I, what I you're saying. I think it is. And I don't know a lot about mixing, but I think this is a pretty weird mix, right? I, uh, I, I have to admit, there were points where the voices sounded <gasps> almost amateurly mixed. Um, and I'm Layered. referring to. Mm. Right. There's a point where the lyrics are, it's all right. Ani mm-hmm. Kintantiana will oh, be fine. Ani no, 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 no. That part, the 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 Korean part sounded like it sounded muffled, as if like they didn't EQ it at all or something. Like mm-hmm. I was like, "What's going on?" You know, like, um. And I do agree. Like the sirens were very strong. There was a lot of points where like, the instrumentals <laughs> like, were very strong. Um, and that part I feel like was kind of intended. That I think that was intended, right? Because like I'm yeah. I'm looking at the press release, and they're like, "We used electric guitars and synths uh, to." make a sound that reminds users of emo core um which (laughs) that's not really a genre i'm like super familiar with but if i had to guess from the word emo core um maybe that's kind of what they were going after you know like a sound that has a sense of urgency that was what my takeaway with this track right there's like a sense of urgency throughout the entire thing like there's a very strong sense of rhythm with the like kick drums, there's like they're all, yep. they're all over the yep. place. Yeah, yeah. And like the sirens are constantly going on in the background, and it feels like we're in a very high speed chase almost to me, you know? It made me a little, how should I say it? I think this, the sound, right? The sound, how it was composed with these sirens and like the beat uh-huh. coupled with the music video. It made it feel like there was an eeriness to this, oh, right? Yeah, 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 it yeah. made me like, oh, this is going to be a jump scare or something. There's a creepiness to this. Yeah. This oh, yeah. Creepiness. And I feel like it's interesting that they're going with this concept, um, but I just feel like, oh, I don't I don't know if I like this because I'm a little scared. I One thing that stood out to me a bit was like the melody itself in the chorus. Mm. That was a That was a good chorus. You know what I mean? It's like, in, yeah, there's a little bit of a switch because it's very... How should, it, the way they end their phrases, right? Is they're, like a right. They're rice. like accidentals, which mm. right. And and um, so the credits for this track is very very short, right? We have Kimi on the lyrics, who's a very famous lyricist. Um, recent her recent works include Savage. Um, oh, and then you have Lee Min Su, which is one of the biggest main producers, lead producers in Mystic Story. Okay. Um and. To kind of, he's been in the producing scene for a long time, and his most famous works include pretty much all of Brown Eyed Girls' title tracks, mm. um, including all their hit tracks like Abracadabra, Sign, mm. all that. Kimi Na wrote the lyrics tracks. for that one, too. Sorry, what? Kimi Na wrote the lyrics for Abracadabra. Oh, did she too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she she's, she basically wrote the lyrics for all of those songs as well. I think I think Kimina is also from Mystic Story, if I remember correctly. Yep. Um. So like I, I and I always felt like Ibinsu's greatest talent is writing very well written melodies that flow really really well, but have a strong sense of climaxing, um, you know, low points, breather points. Like they're very engaging, and I mm-hmm. g- I'm getting a lot of that here, and I'm really excited about that. Um, and this kind of sound isn't something we hear often in, in, no. in K-pop, right? Mm-hmm. Like even the parts in the verses where like, it'll be really dark for a couple bars and then it'll end with like a part, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Those parts, I feel like there was a, such a strong contest, contrast where I was like, 
ooh, you know, like, <laughs> mm, yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, it's like, okay. it's a like creamy pasta that's kind of spicy too, you know, like. It's a kick. Mm. Right, right. There's a kick to it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. No? no, only me. Okay, fine. Jeez. I mean, the thing is, that I, I feel like I, the, the melody, right? The verse melody is kind of stuck in my head because I feel like it's so odd. Like, I don't expect mm. it to go in certain ways. And mm-hmm. then it kind of, it feels like it kind of resolves in the chorus. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, this is really good. I like the vocals as well. Mm-hmm. I think the, their tone is very, very nice and mm-hmm. it complements the whole vibe. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, I guess, I, I guess my biggest problem with this debut, and it's mm-hmm. with the music video, it mm-hmm. felt like a performance video because there was so much choreo shots. That I, I was actually hey, there's confused. some box rooms too. Like, yeah, yeah. You know? I was a little confused, and I was like, "Oh, is this a perform? Am I watching the performance vi- uh, music video?" And and no, this is the the actual thing. And right. I don't know. I was a little confused as to why they did that because I feel like it lacks the story building that I think they're going for in just the choreo. I, wasn't there like a whole thing about their world? I think I saw something on uh, about this on Netflix. Apparently, like I didn't see it there, but like I saw an image of like them and their thing, world building thing, video on Netflix or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I'm making this up at this point. Um, but as far as I understand, like they do want to do a lot of world building, and that's really mm-hmm. cool. Um, on the other hand, I felt like the music video was almost. Uh, I don't know. It kind of, kind of felt a little dated, um, mm. which I mean, mm. given Mystic Story doesn't have any experience with producing idols yet, this is their first time, right? Um, for those of you guys who aren't familiar, Mystic Story is a subsidiary under SM Entertainment, um, mm. but their production crew is very, very different, very separate. Um, and they've done a lot of hit productions, like Knowing Bros is from them. Um, they have a lot of celebrities, variety artists, uh, lots of great vocalists and singer-songwriters under their thing. But this is their first time doing an idol, right? Like, I guess mm-hmm. Brown Eyed Girls, they took a huge part in production, but, like, that wasn't really, like, a mystic story solo thing. Um, given that, maybe this is a place where they, you know, kind of skimmed on. Um, mm-hmm. But I feel like if you want to do, like, a good world-building idol piece, you gotta have like great visuals, you know. Like that's yeah, right. Like that's isn't that's that like what? the the Luna special essentially. Right? Exactly, right? is by having like a billion shots in your music video that you could turn into screensavers and stuff, right? Right. The Luna yes. special, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is literally what they right, do. right. They started doing it, right? Yeah. I don't know. It, it's like a. It's interesting because they accomplished the goal of getting everyone to talk about the song. This was a humongous discussion on our this Discord. Oh, really? For, like, yeah, where people were Damn. talking about, do they like the song? Some people really like the song. Some people despise this song. I feel like I'm somewhere mm. in the middle. Same. Um, this is not the route I would have choose with a debut. But, you know, if you're trying to grab attention, you clearly did with this one, right? Like, right. And, like, I want to do, I do want to bring up something I brought up with, like, uh, Savage real quick. Mm-hmm. Because it is something new. And they are trying a new sound. It's not technically new, but it's new for K-pop, right? This isn't something yeah. we're familiar mm-hmm. with. We're being pushed outside our comfort zones, so if you don't like if you don't like this kind of sound because you're not used to it, that makes a lot of sense. But that that, that does make a lot of sense. But I, at the same time, I encourage you to highly I highly encourage you to like give it another shot because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of it feels like it was very intentionally done, and to a degree, I think it was really really well done too. You know. Um, okay. And, and like it's t- in in that direction, it's almost comparable to Savage, which I know also is something that a lot of people <laughs> are very divisive about. Mm. Fair, um, for the same reasons too. Um, I just like it when people think outside the box, you know, because we do yeah, do a no, podcast no. about K-pop, I, I, right? I think and we like, give them their props on that regard, because they're, right, they're right, definitely right, doing right. crazy stuff. Um, oh yeah. Let's move to the last song, uh, the one that came out on Friday, two days ago, on November twelfth. We have Twice's Scientists, so they are from JYP. Debut 2015, last three songs were The Feels, Alcohol Free, Cry For Me, 117 Music Show Wins. Uh, This album, The Formula of Love, I don't know how to do the maths here, 0 plus T equals heart, right? Um, It's (laughs) O plus T, excuse me. It's once and twice. 
Oh. All right, all right, all right, all right. Whatever they're going for, it, it passed 700,000 pre-orders. So it wow. did really well. Wow. Um, Big numbers. Interesting song. I don't want to go first on this one. I want oh, to hear really? more. Really? I really do. <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about this one. Oh, mm. okay. Okay. Um, okay. You know what? I think this is a good song, right? I think it's a good first. first. <laughs> I'm going to go first. I okay, think it's a fine. solid twice song. But I think there are, like, I think the issue I have with this song is that there are other songs on the album which are just better. Oh, I haven't listened through yet, but. Fair. Mm. Um, if you, Anita, well, you okay, know. Okay, if you're going to listen to one song on this twice album, uh -huh, you got to uh -huh. listen to Last Waltz. Oh, boy! Last that is okay. by okay. far. <laughs> Like, I, I've listened through, I, like, halfway listened to it. I had this on the background. I was listening to this thing. This was the only song that I had to stop what I was doing oh. and say, we got to play that one again a couple times, <laughs> you know? I, I was, so last Friday, we did, on Twitch, we did a listening party. Mm, yeah. Um, this, this song came on, and, like, I was making the stink face, and I was like. No, <laughs> this, this is, like, is this, the if this was the title track, this would be a candidate for top three twice songs ever. I wow. think there was a lot of like really nice guitars, good trap sounds, oh, nice. and then some orchestral sounds, and oh, it was yes. just beautifully Fitting. designed. Yeah, so if you're you if missed you're, for out, me, Anita. if you're gonna listen to one song on the album, mm -hmm. it's Last Waltz for sure. Um, uh, going back to the scientist, I think they kind of used the twice formula here. You know, the standard ah uh, yes tried the and OG. true. OG twice, twice strategy, which is good because you end up with an above, like a a good twice song from it, right? A you don't do song. anything too mm. crazy. You just stay in the twice lane. We do, we do it up. That being said, it's a very safe song for them, you know? Yep. It's doing the, the tried yep. and true. This is twice. Let's just do the twice sound. We'll sell a ton of albums. Let's go, you know? So I don't know how to feel because I think it's a great song. I think it's a good song. It's a good twice song, solid twice song. But it's not pushing any boundaries, and I don't think it's better than some of their epic hits of the past, right? So uh, that's where that, it I agree. Me. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I feel about the scientist. Interesting. Uh, I'll go last again, Anita. You go first. Yeah, I feel like I'm actually siding a little bit more with Doug's opinion in this case because mm. I also felt like I liked a lot of the overall feeling and packaging, you know, concept, visually, everything that was going on, right, for this comeback. Um, I thought it made perfect sense. Great styling. Um, I loved Momo's hair, the mm -hmm, red mm -hmm. highlights. I thought mm. that was really, really nice. Um, makeup was on point as well. I, I don't know. Visually, as always, twice above average. Great. But musically, I did feel like, hmm, there was something about the, the chorus where I thought, oh, this is, we're at the chorus now. I didn't realize it at first. And I felt like, oh, it's very... It felt very stable. Like there was any, there wasn't anything like super high or super low. And overall, I was a little surprised because I thought the the register they were singing in was a little bit lower than what I expect with Twice. Mm -hmm. And I thought I like, okay, this is this is pretty interesting. I don't mind that they did that. But it felt like maybe maybe subconsciously I was thinking like, where's the where's the high note? Where's the belting? Where's the, like something that gives it a little push, like it goes higher? But it it never happened. And I don't. I guess I'm not saying that it needs to happen, but I, I was expecting it, and I was felt a little, like it was missing for some reason. Yeah. Well, you know, twice twice doesn't need to do what you what you want, Anita. <laughs> you, you <laughs> of know. course not. Of course yeah. not. And I'm, and I feel like it, it still holds up because it's a very catchy song. The chord is very very nice. Uh, there's a lot of point here and there. I just felt like it was very. I don't know, mellow. I don't know what to call it. Like it's just very. I don't want to call it one note, but it's very easy on the ears, I want to say. Like, it's not like a whole journey, I want to say. It's not some, nothing that's going to leave me like thinking, like, oh, what was going on here? It's, it felt just very nice. Here's the thing. Here's what we're missing in this track right now. Mm. And this is what you're referring to. Because a lot of K-pop tracks, they will have like sound effects which cue a transition, right? There will be risers, mm. hitters, you know, droppers, you know, all these sound effects, you know, <laughs> and then it'll do a mute thing for a second and it'll be like, Poo! you know, like that always happens <laughs> in K-pop. It's like a blowing whistle and they're like, 
Hello. Leading you. Yeah. Right. Mm. Hello, this is the chorus. Please mm-hmm. be excited. Mm-hmm. You should be excited. This is the chorus. This is that's what those do, right? And this track does not do that. Right? Ring Ring doesn't mm. do that either, right? That's true. Right, right. A lot of this was the case with a lot of the tracks this week. Um and for me, that usually then that usually means it relies on the vocalist to kind of make that transition happen. It relies on the main character to do all of that. In the case mm. of Ring Ring, it was done really well. In the case of Scientist, I thought I was still convinced too. Like I could tell, okay, here we are, like in the chorus, yeah, Sana okay. singing, slash Yo singing. Um and like I can tell um, that they were kind of going for much more of a smoother, uh, yeah. easy listening mm. sound. Mm. Right, right, right. Um, where it doesn't, it's not too aggressive. It's a lot more friendlier. Yet, I still think there was a lot of bounce. You know, the bass was just was bopping the entire time. That was some good bass, mm. you know? There was a lot of like electro house in, like arrangements in there too. And like, I personally felt like this was a sound twice as never done. Like, I, I, mm. it, it felt like they were wearing clothes that they've never worn before, even though uh, yeah. it's a similar aesthetic, if that makes any sense, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and to a degree, I feel like that sums up how I feel about the album too, but to kind of get to that point, it felt like Twice was trying to meet in the middle of what they've done pre-fancy and post-fancy, right? Okay. Because that marks a transition in their career where they went for much more of a mature slash serious concept where like a lot of the music videos they straight up stopped smiling and like that's what <laughs> twice was really well known for here it felt like they're still mature but they're still smiling you know um and the sound is a lot more refined it's not like too aggressive it's not too cutesy you know like what stood out to me a lot was like mia's vocals Oh, mm-hmm. yes. Right, right. In this album yes. overall, too. But like, Nina's amazing like, on the entire album. On the entire album, right? People yep. kept saying that in chat the entire time. Like, it felt like a rediscovery of Mina because when you look at previous uh, Twice title tracks, the, the, the usage of Mina has been the cutesy, uh, fragile bridge person, you know, who's like the breather between you go into the final chorus or like going to the you know, chorus, whatever. That's the role she used to play. And here... Her pitch is her her range is all she she's using her lower register. Yes, I and like it's it. right. There's so much oomph. There's so much like strength, even and, and at the same time, it feels a lot. Ele- it feels very elegant, uh, and and very well put together. And overall, it felt like to me at least this was some of the best stuff they've done in the last two years. I'm not. I I still like um mm. the feels more than this. I have to admit. Right. I agree. I like right, the right. feels more. I but agree. I like yeah. this. I like this way more than alcohol free cry for me. Uh, I don't like that either. Like this feels like they're wearing clothes that fit them now. Whereas hmm. if I listen to the album Eyes Wide Open, for instance, like it constantly feels like they're trying to be, they're the they're the they're trying to be cute and but no no so they're trying to be serious. You know like oh like look at us hmm. we're we're adults now. Look at us the adults we're twenty. Five years old, we're adults, adults. Uh, <laughs> we can drive now and smoke and drink and all that. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's my take going with Scientist. Uh, it feels like they found a good place in their career where they mix, where they found a mature version of them that really works well. And now we're back to the original Twice um, sound and formula. But at the same time, to me at least, it felt fresh. It felt fresh. Mm-hmm. I just think that the um, if we're talking peaks and valleys, the peaks weren't as high as they could have been. You know right. what I mean? Mm. I think that's thing. the yeah. one that's takeaway true. from me. It just felt a little muted, you know. Um, mm, yeah, but that's not their fault, really. One more thing, I, and this is like a question to you guys. I saw a lot of a lot of similarities between this and uh, the Red Velvet track we got, <gasps> Queendom. No. I was I gonna 100% say that. Thought that. I 100% Wait, I thought that I thought about like a uh, red velvet. It came to mind. I right? kept thinking this song sounds yeah. just like another song. Like, not I mean, exactly, I, but well, there's like no, no, oh no, same things. vibes, same right. vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the, it, it felt like the way they executed it was still similar too, because like Queendom felt like a very red velvet way to do that sound, and this feels like a twice way to do that sound. Like it feels mm. like they're still de- doing their own takes on that. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, it's like a very sugary. They're, they're in the same movie. lane for sure. These right, 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 right. 
Mm. Um, how do yeah? So how do how yeah. do people feel about this trend? Um, how do you feel about Queendom and Scientists? Because they, I do think that they are somewhat similar. They're not the exact same song. But no, they no. Do have I, a I lot feel of, like they share a lot of things. In, in terms of like the conceptual direction they were going in, there were like there was a lot of share, share sharedness, sharing. Mm. Similarities. A, similarities. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> English. Um, um. I don't know. I I personally think this is a good direction they're going in like mm. if i look at the first album and the second album and the third album which each do a really good job of capturing the concept that they're at uh, they were really after at that time um i felt like this was the most well built in terms of sound and character and the way twice members perform on the album um i don't like musically i feel like this is their high at the moment I know mm. that in terms of popularity, I, you know, like that might be, there might be there might be a little bit of debate around that. Uh, but like, I don't know. For me, at least, I'm liking it. Yeah. I'm digging it. Yeah. Mm. I thought it was a solid song for sure. Looks to be you if you don't like it. <laughs> All right. Um, other releases <laughs> includes Victon, Sweet Travel, B One A Four, Adore You, B I Cosmos, Stripping Via Universe, Vertigo. Eric Nam released Any Other Way, and got Seven's Mark released Last Breath. All right, we're at Spice King, though. Um, we're going to evaluate the Soja chart and choose which song reigns supreme and is the Spice King. Um, you know, the chart from last week, 17's Rock With You, picked up its third crown, entered the Hall of Spice, so it is no longer Ooh. eligible. Second place was Somi's XOXO, and third place was Espa Savage. New candidates are the three songs, so it's One Us Is Luna, um, Billy's Ring X Ring, and then Twice's Scientist. I have a chart. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a chart. I'm not confident? flipping over the entire table, but I am pretty ah. confident with what I got. Okay, uh, okay. Third place. I'm going to retain So Me's XOXO. I'm going to put it in third. Oh, okay. Okay. Second place, I'm going to put One Us is Luna. I do like this oh. one. Oh. And then in first place, I put uh, Twice as Scientist. It's the chart that I will go with for this week. Nice, nice. My chart is not too different from that. Uh, I'll start in first. In first, I also place twice. Um, I feel like I'm still feeling a little lukewarm about it, but I over overall, like big picture, I like this comeback. I I also feel like concepting wise, I it's really nice. Like visually, everything going on was really cool. So I'm I'm liking it. Second place, I'm putting Somi, XOXO. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's still middle of the list for me. I don't think it's ever going to get higher, to be honest. I don't know if it's going to stay here next week, but that's where I'm going to place it for now. And in third, I'm going to put Wanas, hey. Luna. Yeah, I thought it was, it was nice. I think the chorus kind of sold it to me where I was like, okay, this is a little different. We're not doing exactly the same thing. We're improving, we're changing things, so I appreciate it. Also, I meant to say this, but in the music video, I was just really surprised. I don't know what filter they use, but their skin looked flawless. Hmm. It was really nice. Shout out, shout out to the video director. Shout there. out to skincare. Shout yes. out to skincare, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the Premiere premier Pro and After Effects yeah. editor who's <laughs> the wasting editors. 50 ed hours per day on these videos. Smoothing the skin, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Warren, what is your chart this week? I noticed both of you guys have XOXO, so me on your charts. Look, I've been putting it on first for like weeks now. Is it going to go down? Late to the party. Um, it's not on my chart, though. <gasps> Whoa. It's so off. <laughs> I had a good time with it. I had a good time with it. It's just, okay. you know, I had, there's new songs. And now I'm like, ooh, look at my shiny new toys. It's Christmas all <laughs> over again. Ooh, yeah. Um... That still means, though, um, that I might like tracks from previous weeks, and that's why I'm putting Savage by Espa on third place. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> I really like that song, too, but third still? Okay. I, I still right. think I like it more than one of this song. I'm sorry. Uh, mm, that's fair. That's rare. all I have to say, because one of this Luna is not on my chart this you week. You know? Savage, your second though, going place. back to Savage, right? Yeah? It's one of my favorite songs of the year, I think. 
I think it's a song of the year contender for me. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I know it's divisive with the way people feel about it, but you can't deny two things. The one is its commercial success, mm-hmm. and two is its uh, uniqueness. Um, that too alone, and the degree of which they're executed in, I think deserves song of the year. But we'll get to that in a future episode <laughs> where we wrap up the year. Um, however, for now, let's talk about finish up the chart for uh, my chart for this week because I have a scientist by twice. Uh-huh. On my chart, and I really like the song. I think it's, you know, it's one of my favorite Korean title tracks from Twice in a long time. That's why it's on second. second? And Billy, Billy on first? with Ring X Ring no. is on my first. Oh place. my wow. god! Wait, what? Even though <laughs> okay. the mix isn't perfect, I have what no are other you complaints. Smoking? Oh I my think goodness. the arrangement is one. very interesting and very mm-hmm. unique and very, very nice. Holy and like I do crap. with Savage, I very much appreciate it when these producers try to do something different. Unlike Savage, though, it still retains a lot of the K-pop uh, formulas that, that like mm. people are familiar with, like the, the melodies we have and all that. Um, so to a degree, I feel like this is a more accessible take on trying to do something new. And y'all should be grateful that they're doing it. <laughs> y'all should be great. Y'all should be brown down. You know, my like, interest is peaked. I don't know if I if it's like the best way to do it yet, but I I'm more I'm looking forward to more of their stuff now. Man. Warren again. You guys have bland taste. Keeping, <laughs> keeping someone from getting double crowns because the Gochu gang put oh. twice in first place with a astounding 51 points in their voting system. Did it, wow. Didn't a lot of people also vote for Billy? Second place <laughs> is one us, Luna, with 29 points. <laughs> and in third place, they put finally uh, Billy Ring X okay. Ring with okay, 26. There you go. See, I'm not in the. You're not alone. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the minority, but not by a huge margin. <laughs> All right, as a result of that, uh, twice, Scientist will pick up its first crown with 18 points. Uh, second place, we have One Us is Luna with 9. And then third place, we have Billy with Ring X Ring. So that is the Soju chart for this week. Dang. We're putting Billy in first place. Let's discuss this, everyone, coming. in all the, the comments and in the <laughs> Soju Talk Talk. Let's talk about that, y'all. Um, finally, though, we're at show winner. Anita, hit us with the winner. Yes, the big winner was The Boys with Maverick. They won on the show, show champion, music being show music court in Kigayo. So a sweep, five music show wins so far. Very interesting. Did not see this coming, but good for them. Yeah, so they won all the available shows because M Countdown was a broadcast this week. So, Wowza. Wow. Shout out to The Boys and their fandom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. strong fandom. We were not the biggest fans of this song, but clearly their fans think otherwise. So oh, yeah. mm. shout out to The Boys. Oh, um. Yeah. That's the end of part one of Soldier Talk episode 150, 165, though. Um, we'll be back after a short break. Three, two, one. Hello, Soldier Talk Nation. This is Anita here with a quick PSA. If you would like to support Soldier Talk K pop podcast, please like, subscribe, or follow us on whatever platform you're using. And consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash talk or donating to us at paypal.me slash talk. On behalf of the crew and myself, thank you. Now back to our regularly scheduled episode. We are back at it with part two of Soji Talk episode 165, where we discuss recent K-pop news and events and give you the state of the nation. All right, news and events. The first one. HYBE announces new independent label Adore, headed by CEO and chief brand officer Min Hee Jin. So Adore mm. stands for All Doors One Room. And the label plans to introduce a new girl group in 2022. The members of this girl group uh, were selected through the Plus Global Audition. Before mm-hmm. joining HYBE, uh, Min Hee Jin was, a, was the visual director, well, one of them, at SM Entertainment. And has worked with girl groups such as Girls Generation, FX, and Red Velvet. And boy bands Shiny and EXO. Interesting. She was so, a yeah, key player of SM Entertainment for a while, right? 
they essentially, I don't know how they got her to move over, but she moved over to Hybe. She is the highest paid female executive in K-pop at the moment, if I remember oh. correctly. Ooh. And they gave her basically her own label, the like Make a Girl group, and Freedom. it seems global yeah. in theme. Um, this is not, let's clarify some things. This is not the Source Girl group. This is completely separate from that. This is a different mm. thing. This is at Adore. Source is doing their own thing. The Sakura thing is at Source. This is the thing that's at uh, Adore. This is going to be more global, I'm going to guess. Overall, though, kind of crazy. They're just basically establishing sub-labels on the yeah. yeah. Wow. I guess what's exciting is we're not seeing that thing anymore where, like, it was expected, right? Where, like, a label would do one group of one gender at a mm-hmm. time. And oh, then yeah, when the generation yeah. changes, like four or five years later, they'll be like, oh, here's a new group, you know. I feel like we're moving away from that kind of model. And the answer yep. is subsidiaries and like little, you know, like mm. little companies. I don't know. Um, that's kind of cool, you know, like it's a I guess it's a it's a little concerning because it's a very populated market where the supply outweighs the demand a little bit. Um but at the same time, as a consumer, I'm getting all this good content. So I have to admit, I am very excited, especially with Min Hijin, uh, Mini Jin, who was like very well praised for her work with like all these groups before in SM Entertainment. Mm. And now she has full control. She's the one, she's the captain yeah. on the ship. I mean, I think that, that's yeah. really cool that she does have that say over everything, right? Like she's right. not working under them now, she's mm. just leading everything, the whole project. What I do wonder, and I have been wondering this regarding a lot of the, I guess, subsidiary or like affiliated artists under Hive now is how does this, how do they work under Hive? Like if Hive is having some sort of um, event with Hive artists, are they there by yep, default? They're there. They're there. Okay. Because I, I don't know. If, I feel if you remember last holiday season, there was a Hive right event yeah, and everyone under the umbrella showed up okay, okay other than cool someone then. who was promised to perform somewhere else that new mm. year's i remember one of the groups wasn't there but they are all considered under the hybe umbrella so when hybe does a hybe family type deal they'll all be there i would assume mm. like, i guess my similar question to that is how much are they involved with each other creatively like mm, yeah, that's true. the better question right yeah is there like a creative office or creative crew in hybe that takes part in uh KOZ and Pletus's productions. Mm. Like, you know, like they're like, ooh, like we need this instead of that. And KOZ has to be like, approving. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. Because I know that was the case with certain companies in CJ, right? Because CJ had a lot of subsidiaries and the ones they were very closely uh, tied to in terms of management, they were also creatively involved while um, a lot of the other labels, especially the hip hop ones, CJ was kind of more like, We'll help you with marketing. Just give us a little more bit of your profit when, when that's all mm. over, you know? Like, they weren't involved creatively at all. So now my question is, does Mr. Bang tell Miss, Mrs. Is she a Mrs. or Miss? I don't know. Miss. Miss. Do, does she tell her what to do as well? Or like, I doubt is, it. I right? doubt it. Okay. This I feels I, like... No. She probably signed to Hybe with this already written into her contract. This I'm agreement. Right, mm, yeah. right. That's what it feels like to me. I agree. Th- and this they does... trust her. So right. they're probably just saying, here's money, make something. Do your Please. thing. <laughs> her having her own company does feel like, here is your little room in our entire apartment. Put a, put whatever bed you want, whatever desk you want, put in it. You know, like, this is your room now. Instead mm-hmm. of, here's your, like, here's your room you share with five other siblings. Instead of that, you know, like, I, I, mm. I do kind of like that. I'm kind of excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I think it could work too. Because if you think about... um hybe as a company right now so bts txt are somewhat related right because they're still under the big hit side mm-hmm. and then and hype still operates under hype but it feels like a different thing or it feels like a different product to me right um mm. i feel like once we get the source and this adore girl group they will also feel very different in concepting i'm going to assume too i hope so yeah mm-hmm. because if you think of what source has traditionally done with gfriend versus what i'm assuming this adore thing i think this adore th- thing will be closer to Espa than it will be to G Friend. Oh. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's my that's right. my feeling. I, that it's I gonna be more too. cutting edge. That's that's like even based on the teaser video they sent us, this is gonna be some 
high level things coming out. Um, now, what's what we're very fortunate to have today, we, and I want to ensure that our listeners tune in very closely because we have exclusive leaks from the Plus Global Audition. If you listen to the episode previously where we talked about this, we forced Anita to audition uh, for this <laughs> thing. Um, Anita was there. She was. She is now a part of the cre- creative crew. Anita, what do you have That'd to say cool. about? Plus global audition. How 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 was that? <laughs> a lot of talented people. Sure, yes, great talent. Look forward to it. You know the sad thing is, I don't think Anita makes the age cut off anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like real talk, right? Like, no, no, are, no. We are no like, longer we're old, we're too old. A, fit to debut. She's a, <laughs> that's why she's the creative crew. She's the she's right. the she's the teacher. You know. <laughs> Overall, though. Um, I'm excited to see what Big Hit does on the girl group side because if you if you think about it, they haven't had a girl group since Glam back in the day. So it's, it's been, been a, a it's drought. Been a minute. Yeah, no girl groups coming yeah. out from there. Do we there. count Glam? Okay, here's the funny thing: is I was in Korea <laughs> when like Glam, Glam debuted. Yeah. I you know, and I was a big fan of them because I was like, "Yo, that's the group!" And then they had all the crap happen, and it was like <laughs> big oof. I had no clue it was Big Hit at the time or whatever it was back uh, then. I mean, but it happened. Um. Anita, we got some more businessy news. Hit us with it. Yes, yes. So the merger between Playum Entertainment and Cracker Entertainment has been completed, with the newly merged label being called IST Entertainment. So artists under IST will include A Pink, Victon, The Voice, and Weekly. And this is a bit of an update because we had been yep. talking about this previously, but it happened. Yep, there was a formal press release that it did happen. Um, they are together. Mm. It makes sense. We have a lot mm. of, like, I would call upper mid-tier, lower high-tier groups in that mix, right? The, the, yes. The company, PlayM and Cracker, kind of feel like they're around the same level these days, right? Mm. So it makes mm. sense to combine them, at least in my mind, um, in terms of magnitude. So I think that's a good idea. I think that they both realize that in the ever-changing world of K-pop, where you need to have a lot of things under one umbrella, they kind of came to the realization we need to merge with other people. Numbers. So that's what mm. makes sense here, right? Um, yeah, I'm excited. Because you got to think RBW and WM combined, PlayM and Cracker combined. I feel like they're on similar levels of combining in that regard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Makes sense to me, is what I'm going to say. Makes sense. They could rent one building. They could save on cost of having people in the uh, employees and stuff, right? Because you don't have to hire double crews. I think it makes sense for everyone. What What doesn't make sense is the name. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying hard to find what IST means, but um, I'm getting nothing. And know? it's spelled yeah. out phonetically, I-S-T in right. Korean. It's so long. Yes. I-E-S-T. I-E-S-T. And I'm like, I am in the I-E-S-T <laughs> website right now. And all it has is like a white page with their logo. And I'm like, what? I can't click on anything. I can't click on about to find it out what acronym, they're about. Right? Yeah, it's got to be acronym. something. What, hey, what, if, what you you know, if you know what I-E-S-T entertainment means, please let yeah, us know. Chime yeah. in. Apparently, um, Kepler is debuting under I-E-S-T. Is that true? Eh? Is that Maybe, true? I'm not actually. You know what? I'm not. Sh- okay, no. Hyuning Baihe is under IST. That's oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Hyuning Baihe is under IST individually. Kepler's Kepler. Hey, I apologize. I'm still, I'm still pushing for Kepler at Mama. We got Mama Moo's late. <laughs> Mama News, not Mama Moo. Mama News later. I'm gonna talk about that some more. But Warren, hit us with the the last main event. Well, I'm here for all the crypto folks and the tech boys. We got some. <laughs> NFT news because YG Plus has been reported to enter the NFT business through a joint NFT venture established between Hype Entertainment and Duna Moo. So hmm. uh, basically, this uh, collaboration of Hype and Duna Moo, they're going to be offering YG artist based NFTs. I guess so everybody's on the hype now. Let's think about it. So last week, Hype and Duna Moo had that. Um, stock sh- swap that they were talking about so they're mm, right. intermingled together and then we think about it YG artists are already on Weaver so there is there is that whole agreement that they have together as well between mm. Hybe and YG so mm. essentially now they're getting further intertwined so mm. YG is not under Hybe but they are now like close friends you know what I mean they're best Very buddies close. with mm. each other mm. and then SM has their label they have their bubble thing. They have a bunch of labels that are friendly with them. And mm-hmm. then JYP is just kind of doing their own thing, it seems. Do we know what platform are the JYP artists under? 
Do we? I, they're in. They're in bed with SM a little bit, if I, I remember correctly. I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. That bubble thing. So it seems like if we break up the big four labels, that's the that's the lay of the land, that's right? The pairings. Those are the pairings. Yeah, Hige ha- and Swipe. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> NFT business, though, it is what it is. If you want to buy some <laughs> online assets that only you have access to, it's up to you. Um, okay. I okay. You know what? I I have to thank uh, a, a couple people reached out to us and they did a great job of explaining what NFTs are. So explain it to us real quick. Right. Um. They are <laughs> pieces of art crypto with bitch bit blockchain <laughs> it's blockchain okay it's blockchain um, so you're the only person who owns it essentially right right so it's a unique thing and it's on the internet so you don't physically own it but you own the data essentially um, right um and i i, I do I, I i there was a I, I did read a little bit about like its environmental impact which is a little concerning oh. to be honest environmental um, okay to to provide a little bit of context before we wrap up, Dunamu is a company that does. Um, they run a, a crypto trade platform uh, called mm-hmm. Upbeat. Um, so it feels like they are providing the infrastructure that is going to uh, let users trade and buy and sell uh, mm. NFTs, right? Because that usually happens with. You, they usually i don't know why but people buy it with crypto you know like i've seen people sell nfts with with uh, ethereum which uh, mm. that's one of the major ones right that's one of the big boys in yeah, the crypto I've game heard of it right can can i make a like a request from you like off not regarding the pod warren i have oh, a sure. notification on discord and that normally means some gigantic news dropped because someone pinged me can you check what my mentions are in the discord server <laughs> Because I can't check right now, or I'll mess Mentions up the recording. At the, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, news? Give us the, uh, <laughs> something go happened. on to the next news. <laughs> okay, I'll to... go on to the next one. Yeah. Um, a side thing, sort of related to this whole space with technology. We're not really covering it, but I heard that Seoul is investing a crap ton of money to become a metaverse city. Like, there a was what? a huge... Po- yeah. <laughs> metaverse There, was, there was, like, a bunch of articles about it. It wasn't super K-pop related, so we didn't talk about it. But there's like a huge commitment from the government in Korea to turn Seoul into one of the first metaverse places where you can like use VR Logan? and all this stuff. Yeah. Dang. I'm going to go ahead and say that sounds like them just trying to sound nice. Um, <laughs> give me a second. My Discord is bugging out for a second. You sure you don't want to go on to the next thing real quick? I'll keep going. Uh, yeah. Other news. In Hypen's Dimension Dilemma, that album, it has now sold over 1.1 million copies on Gaon, which Ooh. means that that is direct-to-consumer 1.1 million copies. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, kind of crazy. Next one. Insiders believe that Blackpink's album will be delayed until the 1st of 2022, and they're speculating that it will be released along with the announcement of a world tour. Warren, if you're talking about Mama News, I already have it on the script. Nope. Nope, it's something else no. bigger. We'll, we'll wrap, wrap up this Blackpink part, and we'll get to my. I'll, I'll announce. All right, story. so Blackpink yeah. gonna be delayed until 2022. There'll probably be a world tour. Makes sense. We have a ton yes. of world tour news in a few mm. bullet points. But Warren, what happened? Well, speaking of Blackpink world tour, Twice is also going on world tour for the third time of their careers. Ooh, and they're oh. coming to Seoul, Los Angeles, Oakland, California, Dallas, Atlanta. And New York, baby. Oh, goodness. <laughs> your, your friend on the Discord server was like, oh, Doug, we're going. And I'm like, oh, I'm going too. I'll see you there. I'm seeing you there and too. And we, we should drag Mal there. And we should drag NBN there. Oh, you know? Oh, you talk me. She's not even a Twice fan. So you talk me. <laughs> um, it will happen. Uh, the New York thing for reference is happening in the UBS arena on February 26th. UBS? Oh, February. Is not UBS that far arena? off. No. Wait, yeah, this is coming up very, very soon. This is February twenty sixth. Dang. Wait, this is in the this is in Nassau County, I think. Is that actually still New York? Yeah. Well, yeah. Or, like, let me look at a map real I'm, quick. Yeah, sorry, dude, I'm a it's horrible far. transplant. It's far. Oh, <laughs> dude, <laughs> it's like it's like you know where Queens is. We gotta go even more right, dude. This 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 is like the type of area where like for me like I, this that everything is upstate up here like this is upstate it, that's upstate no this it's upstate. no it's on Long Island it's yeah, it's no. like 
it's, it's you know how Village. you know how you know how East Bayside is. It's a south of Bayside. Ah, uh, okay. Um, it's pretty far. This God is pretty damn. far. Um, yeah. If uh, you want to come, you can. Okay, we'll figure this out. Maybe you want to go. So that's that. Um, uh, some I'm other less news. Excited now. You know what? Let me talk about all the concert news now, since we okay. were on the Twice concert. Um, yeah. NCT 127 announces second world tour Neo City Soul The Link starting with Soul on December 17th through 19th at the oh, Gokchon nice. Sky Dome. People mm. are saying, how can you call it a world tour when you only are doing Soul at the moment? That's that's what I heard a lot of people complaining <laughs> to be about. Determined. Makes Soul's sense a part to me. of the world. Um, Soul's a part of the world. Secondly, ATs has announced the 2022 world tour called The Fellowship Beginning of the End. What Stops the will what? include Seoul from January 7th to the 9th in the United States from January 18th to the 30th. So that's a lot of dates in between there. And wow. uh, Europe from February uh, 12th to March 1st. So that's another wow. half a month. Wow. Of stops. Stretch right there, yeah. We got to assume at least a stop every other day. So there's going to be at least six to seven stops on those two legs. Oh my God. So that's going to be pretty crazy. Hey. Anita, you could finally go to a, uh, an 80s concert, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, finally get that ticket. <laughs> Other concerts, Newest is having an offline concert in Seoul called The Black, and that is from November 26th to the 28th. So it's happening real yeah. soon. Um, yeah, yeah. On and off, they're having a four-day concert or three-day, something like that. The last two nights will be live-streamed. It's called Code Number One Reverse. On and off is the group that's going to the military together soon. So this is the last Gross. time to see them in a while. Yes. <laughs> so that's that one. And then finally, Jesse, January 22nd, having an online concert called Queendom of Jesse. Wow. Oh, so nice. that's her first online concert there. So though ton of concert stuff happening. Everyone's announcing one at the moment. Um, other news, though. Lovely's Miju. Would you have something to say, Warren? Uh, it's just tour season for everybody now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Tours, everyone's touring now. Cool. Yeah. Um Lovely's Miju, we know that Lovely's disbanded, but uh, Miju herself, which she's probably the most popular member of it at the moment, she's in talks to sign with Antenna following her departure from mm. Wulin. I think that was the one War one of the ones Warren might have mentioned last week. I know I was saying P Nation, but Antenna's not that far of a stretch from that, I think, either. What What was interesting was, um, so she, Miju's been a, the newest member of Yuja Talk's variety family yeah. people. ah that yeah. makes sense yeah and being you just talk he's a part of antenna so maybe you know people are thinking he's got you know he was like oh this in. girl's kind of cool bring yeah. her to the company you know maybe that's what happened hey man if you just talk wants you in his line you just follow you know you, there's you do it. popularity and money no questions behind him <laughs> go all right next one 101 is confirmed for the 2021 Mnet Asian Music Awards, also known as MAMA, on December 11th. Nice. All members except for Lai Kwai Lin will perform. You know how he had that big falling out with uh, Cube and he's kind yeah. of like, he's like, yeah, I ain't doing stuff. that Korea joint anymore. Um, additionally, the dance crews from Street Woman Fighter are also having a stage <gasps> on MAMA. Yes. That was confirmed nice. as well. Oh, Those nice. girls are everywhere. They're on They're Knowing everywhere. Bros. They're going to be on Running Man, I believe, as well. The leaders. Wow. Mm. Yeah, they're all over the place right now. Um, they are the hype. Nice. You know how last year was all about trot? It's all about Street Woman Fighter this year. In yes. terms of like, the thing that's popping <laughs> Great. off. Great. Um, <laughs> next, SF9 will be joining Universe on November 17th. That does make mm. sense to me. And then finally, Super Junior Shindong tested positive for COVID-19 and is currently in self-quarantine. So we wish oh, him no. the best. Mm. A lot of news for this time of year, right? Like... Yeah, yeah people make normally. it. I guess what a lot of companies are doing now and people are doing now is they're setting themselves up for 2022 already. They're like, this is the plans. This is what we're doing. Teasing. Mm. All these world tours, though, all over the place. Um, I feel like we're setting up for like um, the new normal, you know, like yep. where mm. this is a transition period, you know, where we're seeing it happen. Accommodating. Yeah. Yeah. Get get hype. Be cautious because, like, about it. Be hype. Realistically yes. speaking, um, if you if you're double shotted up, right, maybe triple shotted up at this point, it's relatively safe to do things. You know, mm. Um, mm. even if you do contract COVID, most likely you'll just be in bed for a couple of days. You know, um, so that being said, it is the new normal because I don't think we're eradicating COVID anytime soon. So no, it is what it is. Um, but in terms of announced big comebacks, so many announcements. Even though we're in the middle of November. Ha uh on the 19th of November, Wanwee, November 23rd, Hwasa, the 24th, Ghost 9, November 25th, Stray Kids, November 29th, Kai, mm -hmm. November 30th, 
Everglow December 1st, on and off December 3rd before enlisting, and NCT Anita, the uh, whole yes. group, December yes. 14th. They do it. 2021. So Last it seems month. like NCT now, they got that pattern that at the end of the year now we do the group thing, right? It seems I like guess, that's the new trend yeah. for them. Hey, I think they were just like, do we want to print another two to three million copies of something and make a lot of money? Let's just do it up. Um, <laughs> if you're the fans who collect all of the NCT albums and stuff, oh, Jesus gosh. Christ. Like, <laughs> How it you must doing? be rough. Right? Rip wallet. Rip wallet. Because they, they release so much stuff. Repackages. New yeah. subunit, new albums. Like, it must be insane. Um, I hope they do that thing again where they combine different songs together. You know, like, that was... Oh. It was pretty cool as an attempt, but I feel like if they tried it for a second time, it could work better. So, you know, maybe. Mm. Yeah. I'm looking like, at the teaser. It says assembly instructions, you know? So I'm like, maybe. <laughs> assembly combined. I- I'm excited for Hwasa, though. Stray Kids, Kai, Everglow. We got a lot of good stuff. Yeah. And that mm-hmm. NCT, of course. Um... We're on to State of the Nation, though. Um, you know, I am going on my trip. I will... The people in the Discord know where I'm going, but I will talk about it next week, exactly where we're going. Mm. Um, Fair. That being said... Have fun. You know, we have been playing the New Worlds, you know. Um, we switched company <laughs> today, oh, so we switched our clan. It's a big move. Um, oh, wow. Positive, it was negotiated. Though? I feel like the one we were in, um, no offense to them, great guys, it, like, we lost some people... Like, just because of fatigue from the game, we lost people mm-hmm. to Battlefield, which is a shooting game coming out. I could tell that we were just not going to be that 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 active. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, I want to play with a lot of bros. I want to chill, have a good time. Mm-hmm. We switched to a new company. We fought in their war today. We captured the second largest town in the game. So all of a sudden, we own a town in the company. Wow. We're in. It all That's worked nice. out. It paid off. <laughs> we joined the company, and within two hours, we won a town. Look at that. Wow. So it that. completely worked out. We made a good gamble there. <laughs> so all the Soju Talk lads are now in that one. It's a good time. Um, other than that, it was my cat's birthday this week. Boots. Oh, happy Boots birthday, the cat. Boots. Happy Boots. birthday. He's one years old. You know, he's grown a lot. Um, we adopted him as a stray. Mm-hmm. I like him. Other than when he tries to bite me because he's still kind of teething <laughs> and he kind of bites their legs once in a while. But I could tell it's out of love and not out of hate. There so you go. We will That's tolerate it think. until he grows out of this face. That's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so that's that's what's been happening to me. Um, Anita, what, what have you been doing? Um, nothing too different than last week. <laughs> I've been playing Animal Crossing again. Okay. Um, okay. Still in the search for Molly. <sighs> um, but um, recently... So along with the update, there was also some new KK Slider songs, which is like the musician of the game, right? Oh, is that the um, doggy? Yeah, the white dog ah. with the guitar. That's KK Slider. And he has songs that you can collect and play with like some sort of um, disc player or stereo in your house. Um, and there's some really good tunes. Um, and with the update, they added some new ones. And can I just shout out my new or like my favorite KK Slider song at the moment is KK Robot Synth, which is really cool because it's kind of like a <laughs> reference to Vocaloid. Um, oh, is, geez. Yes, but it sounds really cool. I thought I, I, I was like, oh, this is very interesting. Um, the cover art is really nice as well. So that's what I've been doing. Um, Wait, um, I need yes. a real quick. So how does KK Slider work? You tell it to, to or him to play a song? Is that how you do this? Yeah. So I, I've never played Animal Crossing before New Horizons. But in, in New Horizons, he comes to your island mm-hmm. on Saturdays after you earn the three-star rating. Mm-hmm. Um, so he comes to your island every Saturday. And at 6 p.m., you can request a song. And the song you request, he gives to you. And you get to keep that. Um, so, do you pay him for his music? No. He's, he's just performing so for the So, he's vibes. just a slave that plays music no, for you. No, no, no. He's a famous musician. How is he, how is he compensated traveling. for his hard work? Um, he's I'm a songwriter sure and a singer. Discs. He's selling discs. You okay. get to buy some of the... You can buy the music 
in the game with bells, but if you have a specific song you want, you can request it. Okay, I mean, that sounds like a different revenue stream, but here, <laughs> if you request a song, he has to play it. It sounds like this is slavery. He's just being, no, he's just being generous. He's being generous because he's such a famous artist in the game. What if he's a famous artist, so he's like kind of tired and exhausted one day? Like, no, he's and he's not. like, I don't want to play that, you know? Like, no, he's so oh, chill. <laughs> can I make an aside? Girl, what's yes. up? I messed up the Spice King totals, but it didn't change the results. I somehow okay, calculated <laughs> three plus three equal a uh, plus one to nine somehow, but that's it not, is not what that it is. Big. It yeah. is what it is. I feel like I messed it up on the the Gochu Gang Crew Tomi's thing today too. Like I had a tie. I don't know. I'm just losing it. Like I thought there was a tie, but there wasn't. And then Col- like <laughs> Koala had to help me out. But you know, I I guess I'm getting old and losing it is what I'm trying to say. No, here. it's, it's a old. Sunday night. It's a Sunday. It night. is actually it's past <laughs> my bedtime. I am right. so tired. Um, <laughs> so uh, we got to get Anita Molly the dog. Uh, Anita, did you pre-order the thing yet so we can buy it for your birthday? It's out already. The subscription. The new thing isn't the new thing out. Already? Oh, oh. Well, actually, no, guys. I decided that I am not in the big hurry to get the Happy Home Paradise thing. What? I actually want. I want to get the Nintendo subscription thing that's for a year, and that unlocks like um, internet. What is it? Like you get to use more. You get the access to access, internet. Yeah. Yes. Through the game. Yes, in the game, within the game. And you can do more things, basically. I think that's more worthwhile for me. All right, well, moment. let us know, Anita. We'll get it. We'll get you some of it for your birthday. Oh. <laughs> a year worth of subscriptions. All right. Is, oh, that, is, that, all, is that all you got, Anita? Yes, that's it. Oh, man. Right. Guys, my life has been a roller coaster. Oh, my God. Why? So, like, Tuesday, right? I, right. I, I started the day off with a bit of a sore throat. Oh, no. Are you sick? And I'm just like, oh, you know, sore throat, whatever. Like, right after we start, right after we wrap up recording last week, I was like, oh, man, sore throat. What's going on? You know, maybe you I've been drinking. You do sound a little sick. Yeah, I was like, maybe I'm drinking too much LaCroix, you know, and like the day <laughs> after, I'm starting to cough, trying to cough left and right, up and down like a little madman, just cough, 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 cough everywhere I go. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh no is this gonna oh, be dear. one of those and like my parents are coming over for thanksgiving like I'll, i'm like i have all these plans i'm like god no please and i go get the test they're like no nope, you're you're f- no negative no covid for you buddy oh, okay so I, i'm i'm covid free uh but that still meant i'm kind of, i was kind of sick for a couple of days and i was like losing mm. my voice and like it was like gone for a couple of days and i was like Geez, I hope it's back by the time we stream on Friday. Um, and it was back. It was back, luckily. Um, but sadly, that means for over a week now, I have not been able to consume LaCroix. It's a cleansing moment for you, It Warren. is a <laughs> painful week You're of my healing. I, the, the animals are coming back. They're recapturing <laughs> yes. nature. No, it's... <laughs> Um, I've been drinking like tea for a whole week now, um, and you know tea is nice, but I yearn for a, a case of Lacroix, um, and I think most of my throat is back now. I think mm. you know I'm not like there was a point where like I was like there was like nothing coming out of my nose for a bit because like it was all like stuff up, stuffed up, and all that. Um, I think I'm all past that now. I had just a week long cold, and now I'm mm. feeling better. That's um, good. Yeah. Uh, Man, yeah, I I still had to cough a whole bunch, and I was like, every time I had to do it in public, I was like scared. I was like, man, I was like, <laughs> don't look at me with those eyes, please. I had my <laughs> test done. It was negative. I sh- I swear, sir, please. Um, but that uh, on, so on Saturday, um, Saturday, this last yesterday, uh, I went and saw Eternals from Marvel. The movie, oh. the movie, mm. uh, directed by Claire Zhao, Katie Zhao, I forget her name. The, the 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 lady who did Nomad Land and all that, um, mm. and I'll keep this discussion spoiler free. Please. I'll keep this discussion yes. spoiler free. The movie's still new. Maybe in the future we'll we'll revisit the conversation with spoilers. For now, I'll keep the spoiler. I'll keep the thing spoiler free. Um, my person, I, I I know there's a lot of negative reception around it. 
Mm. I think this is by far the lowest Marvel Rotten Tomato rating we have. Mm. Right? It's in the 40s the last time I checked. Oh, okay. But I, I really have to admit, I think some people are just overreacting because it's not what they expected, honestly. Um, like, I understand there are parts like pacing and like character development that weren't fully fleshed out. Um, but at the same time, I didn't find it to be boring at all. Like, it's here's the thing: there was a there was an interview a while ago where like Martin Scorsese was like, "Oh, Marvel movies are not film. They're not film. They're not cinema. They're they're they're, th- they're theme parks." That's what he said. <laughs> and and the point of that discussion isn't like saying Marvel movies are bad movies. It's saying that he that those aren't the films. They aren't cinema films in the way he's done movies and it's a lot oh, more no. action packed right there are blockbusters you know like explosions left and right boom 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 action. that kind of thing mm. right um and and this movie felt like it was moving away from that a little bit um i personally mm. thought a lot of the shots were like visually very stunning very mm. very beautiful um and, and i almost liked that it wasn't like a nonstop thrill ride for like two hours. Rather, it felt like I saw some people saying it felt like a National Geographic documentary. I get that. Oh. I get that. I get that. I get that. Interesting. At the same time, there's that's also cool too. You know that that's also cool too. So like, if you're going in expecting a nonstop Avengers, oh yeah, we're gonna. Well, Team up together, fight the bad guys. Pew, 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 pew. If you're expecting that, that's not going to happen. Yes, there are action scenes. Yes, there's world building. Yes, there are bad guys and superheroes. But this isn't your t- typical superhero movie where, like, the character uh, suddenly all day, you know, f- awakens and he superpowers and the villain's there. And, like, oh, yeah, I got to, you know, I got to, you know, do this for my friend or family or dad, whatever. That, that doesn't happen with this movie. Uh, to the degree they normally do with Marvel movies. But I still think there was a lot about it that I enjoyed. One thing that really stood out to me was like all the effort they did to like include diversity with their cast. And, yes, that was the thing. Right. And I really have to point out, I really, really dislike it when some of that feels very forced, when it feels artificial. It sometimes yeah. feels like the, the director's going, oh, look at us. We we you we did this thing, so now be nice to us. That that's what it feels like sometimes, and I'm like, okay. I mean, you know, I appreciate the effort, but you don't have to rub it in my face like it's like this is the only thing you've done. Um, here it felt very very natural. Hmm. And that's like, good then. No, it was I think the best effort to do diversity in Marvel, period, so far. Like, mm. um, and I really dig that. Like there was there there was there was obviously. If you look at the cast, there are Asian people and there, you know, like there's people of diverse races, sexualities, there's people with disabilities, mm-hmm. there's people with like, um, this is all in the trailers, by the way, this is not a spoiler. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Right, right. There's like people with mental illnesses um, and like that's parts of diversity that people don't get to discuss often. Like working in UX, I have to consider accessibility and that means like can this app be used by people who like have visual impairments mm. or like stuff like that? Um, to, to that degree, I, I feel like when people say diversity, people just stick to race, sexuality, that kind of deal. Um, but this movie does a great job of like expanding beyond that. Mm. Obviously they're doing a great job of like, doing all that already, but they're like expanding beyond that even further to kind of be kind of engulfing together. And, and that, that was like a really cool thing about this movie for me. Obviously, there's Ryan Don. Ryan oh, Don? yeah. <laughs> uh, Don Lee. Sorry, Don Lee. Don Lee. You know, Ma Dong Tok, you know, the Korean actor. Yes. He, he was like a very strong dude. And like, he, he like slaps and punches really hard. And like the sound effects, man, like the whole theater <laughs> like boomed whenever he did it. There was, a, there was a specific sound effect where like I was like, vibrations on the air you know like, you know, it was really cool I, I have to admit this is something you want to see in the theaters because it's so beautiful the sound is really really good mm, um, it yeah go, go. Mm. I, I honestly think people should try it out because I don't think it's ba- as bad as people are making it out to be mm-hmm. I don't think it's perfect I agree character development could have worked a little better um, the plot was kind of very rushed I feel like it could have been better as like a Disney Plus show 
you know, six, seven episodes, ah. you know, um, kind of, you know, lengthen it a little bit, take your time to develop everything. Um, There's a but, lot of characters and a lot to build in like two hours, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't do the typical thing of like introducing a character, building an origin story. Like they just dive right in. And I was like, okay, maybe this is a little too quick. And this is why people are, you know, not very happy with it. And there are moments where I was like, okay, this is a little draggy. This is a little boring, you know. Uh, um, yeah, that's that's my takeaway with it. I, I don't think it's as bad as other people so make it to be. as long as you go with nothing and this is a Marvel blockbuster action movie, you think you'll have a good time watching it? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't consider this a t- like a traditional superhero movie. You okay. Know? Mm. I would I personally would classify this as like like drama oh. with like action elements because they're superheroes. You know? Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. So it's definitely different than the run of the mill uh, Marvel it's, stuff. This is savage for Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> this is savage for Marvel. They're doing different things. Hey, so if you think Warren has trash taste, then you might not like this one either. Um, yeah. Billy on first. Uh, next week, though, <laughs> on Monday, we have Tiara tomorrow, so that should be kind of cool. Tuesday, Kang Daniel. Wednesday, E-Last. Thursday, Wakey Makey. Friday, Monster X and Ha Song Un. And then on Monday, uh, November 22nd, we have SF9. You know, this is a bit of a shorter episode. It's a uh, off time for us to record anyway. <laughs> um, it is what it is. We did go through everything, though. I don't think we really rushed anything. Um, yeah. I'm going to assume that the shorter episode is mostly due to the lack of an activity in the Nation, but we'll be Mm -hmm. doing more of those in the future. Um, Next week, though, we'll have eight days of content to cover, so it'll probably be a little bit longer inherently. Uh, But this has been Soju Talk, your weekly shot at K-pop. If the release is a little weird or you're kind of confused at what's going on, we're sorry, but, you know, we have to adjust for things. We are delivering an episode still. (laughs) Deal with it. Deal with it. Um, So just be nice to everyone. But if you've already made it here, it means you already like us. So that's pretty cool. There you go. Um, We'll see you guys next time, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye Bye-bye. Special shout-outs to our Fiesta patrons. Bagel, based Nina, Brian, Chano, Delmonic, Ellie, Genki Boy, Goku Mama, Grace, Jacob, Liam's Games and Toys, Luke Daniel, Malfiar, NJ Parks, Tear. Thank you for joining so Talk. And special thanks to our Discord server mod, Jacob, K Music Erde, Koala, Mafiar, Max, No Bias Nuna, Tuggles, and Wolf Two Nine Seven.